Hey everyone, this is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner, and today I'm going to review the Purify 4-inch Midwoofer. As you can see, this is a 4-inch drive unit. Pretty large ferrite motor on the back. Very interesting design on the surround, which is supposed to be a more linear surround, which, frankly, all the science and stuff that goes into this speaker is so overwhelming, to me at least, that I'm just going to redirect you to their website so you can read more about it. But just wanted to kind of show you what the drive unit itself looks like right now. You can see, hopefully, that it is a uh, overhung motor, and you can see the coil windings in there. Pretty beefy little driver with very, I guess, acoustically transparent basket. And this is the back of it. And some venting, like it's six and a half inch brother venting on the, uh, the cone or under the cone with little holes underneath it. So very robust, very well engineered mid woofer, four inch mid woofer. All right, everybody. So we are at my website, which is aaronsaudiocorner.com. And then if you go to the drive units button, you'll be able to find your way to this review. And here we have just a picture. Uh, let's see, there's an Amazon affiliate link. If you ever feel like you need a new pair of underwear or socks or deodorant because you might stink, if you want to use my affiliate link, that helps me keep this site running. Gets me a small commission, and by small, I mean like 4% on average. Uh, so here's some basic information, which I'm not going to spend much time on. I want to go ahead and get straight to the results. And here are the TS parameters, which are very much in line with what Purify posts. And just as a note, there are a lot of instances where a third party's results could be different than a manufacturer's because TS parameters are tested in different ways. And one thing that is important to note is that the temperature has a pretty significant effect on the VAS parameter and BL. So sometimes you'll get a very different result and that could be why. But I'm not gonna spend any time here because what we know is pretty much what uh, Purify already lists. The main things I wanna focus on are the linear excursion for base use. So per the Clipple standard or per the IEC standard measured with my Clipple, I am limited to about 4.7 millimeters one way uh, in excursion, which actually for a four inch midwoofer, is really quite good. This is the highest linear throw of a four inch drive unit that I am currently aware of. I'm not saying there aren't others. I just don't think that there are. And if there are, I'm certainly not aware of them. Now we'll kind of look at the different results. You can see that there's very long linear BL stroke and the stiffness asymmetry, stiffness of asymmetry. So yeah, it's about two millimeters forward uh, offset. So bringing that in could increase the suspension asymmetry and improve the overall linear throw by probably about a millimeter or so, give or take. And then we're going to go look at the frequency response. So the one price you pay with having a long throw speaker is in sensitivity, and that's no different for this Purifies. The average sensitivity is, I measured is about 83.4 dB between 300 to 3 kilohertz. And within that region, though, it's actually pretty linear. The F3 is 68. I'm going to blow this up here. Uh, and within the gray window, you can see the plus or minus 1.5 dB average. So what's really kind of throwing things out of whack is this large dip here. So realistically, it's probably closer to about 84 dB on average um, through that band. But just this this dipping here is causing the average to be pulled down. And I'm not quite sure what's going on with this. I did notice in Purify's data and as well as Hi-Fi Compass's data that they show this same dip here, but they don't show this uh, peaking behavior here. So I'm not necessarily sure what's going on there. I measured this numerous ways just to make sure this wasn't my measurement setup. And even in near field as well as far field, this shows up. So I'm not necessarily sure what's going on here. Outside of the typical pass band, which is probably going to be that 300 to 3K to 4K region, we can see that the breakup extends about plus 7 dB over the mean and peaks at around 5 kilohertz. So it's not bad. It would be nice if it could be pushed out a little bit further, uh, especially for those who are going to want, it, run, want to run it low and high. So maybe between the 80 hertz to 4 kilohertz region. 
but beaming, as we can see in this data set, starts at around three kilohertz. So most people are going to cross it below four kilohertz. I would guess probably three to four kilohertz region anyway. And the off axis response tracks pretty well. Again, until you get to about the maybe three to four kilohertz region again. So that simple, you know, napkin math will tell you that that's about the beaming point anyway. And we're going to keep going. So the distortion values for these speakers are really quite good. And that's the one thing that I'm noticing here. The mid-range distortion is very low. Uh, even at 95 dB, the mid-range distortion is well below the 1% bar that I have marked here. It's within about a half a percent. At 95 dB, above 200 hertz, even above 100 hertz, uh, it's still quite low. And then when you go below 100 hertz, you're getting to about, let's see, at 95 dB, I need to wait for this thing to stop. Uh, at about 60, 70 hertz, somewhere in that region, you're about 3% THD. So for its size, it's a very, very good uh, mid-woofer type speaker. Again, prime candidate, in my opinion, for a studio monitor, a very small studio monitor. And this is the IMD data, which I'm not going to spend a lot of time here in. I'm going to kind of keep going. The max uh, SPL testing. So we can see that within the range of 80 hertz to 1600 hertz, the max output theoretically would be about 96.6 dB. But when you take compression into effect, it's about 94.6 dB uh, through the mid range area which actually I think is pretty high for a low sensitivity speaker like this. So it's kind of on par. If you added about three or four dB uh, to make up for that sensitivity, you arrive at about 100 dB uh, max SPL, which is in the ballpark of what, you know, the other speakers that I've been testing, the six, seven inch midwoofers have been testing. So worth noting, and I'm going to keep going. This is a different max SPL testing where the range of 200 to 4,000 Hertz and you'll notice that the SPL max is basically the same. And the reason why it's basically the same when it's more limited is because again, it's the mid range compression that's kind of causing you to, uh, to lose output there. And I think bottom line, I know I've kind of blown through this, but I'm really trying to get these out the door. I've actually give these, given these speakers away uh, in a giveaway recently on my Facebook page. So more reason to, to kind of jump on there and, and keep in touch with me that way. I need to get these out the door. Having said all that, I think that these are really good speakers for, again, a compact bookshelf speaker. I wouldn't use them necessarily in a three-way because you give up so much in sensitivity. Uh, you also lose that benefit of their long throw. So if you're going to use a three-way speaker and you needed a mid-range, I would look elsewhere just because you don't need it to play down to 100 hertz or, or 80 hertz, you know, in a bookshelf type system. You know, you need something that will play 200, 300 hertz and up and you know you can get more sensitivity that way and i think i'm going to end it there yeah so uh, very interesting speaker i'll be interested to see how people use this going forward and their diy designs or as manufacturers might try to incorporate this and i'm curious to see what purify comes up with next because they seem to really be doing some very unique things with their drivers and very very low distortion drivers especially through the mid-range even their six and a half was just impeccably low through the mid-range and they also provide you the added benefit of the good long linear excursion on the lower end so yeah that's going to do it for this review i hope you guys learned something i hope you guys appreciate it and make sure to go to my website to read more gory details about all the inner workings and the test results a great drive unit when used within its limits and with that said i'm going to go i'll talk to y'all later peace